our perception and our support has never been higher uh, right now, according to, to all the polls that are out there. You're starting to see people come together and say, enough is enough. And the system is just not working for the vast majority of the American public out there. And we see that in a lot of the studies. There was a study last year where they, they asked millennials, how important is it to live in a democracy? And 30% said it was important to live in a democracy. 70% said it wasn't important to live in a democracy. And 24% of those said it was bad to live in a democracy. Now, that's, those are startling figures. But that group, the millennials, have paid the price and been the brunt of a broken economic system. And so they're starting right now to fight to fix that system. For us, if we stopped saying, here's what we are, come and join us, we started saying to them, what do you need us to be so we can help you? And we tried to change ourselves so that we were what they needed us to be to support them. Uh, and it's been successful. You see that uh, uh, last year, 75% uh, of the, the people that we organized, uh, the quarter of a million people that we organized, were under 35 years of age. They wanted somebody who was going to fight to change the rules of the economy. They didn't believe that Hillary would change the rules of the economy. They thought he would. And so far he has, not the way they've, they've wanted him to be changed, but he has changed the rules of the economy. Uh, and that's what they were looking for. Trump talked about their aspirations in a lot of different ways. He talked about trade. I mean, trade has been... Uh, done in the past in a way to benefit Wall Street and the rich, but it's hurt working people. And they've tried, many elites, Democrats and Republicans alike, have tried to say it's either you're for this free trade or you're this Neanderthal protectionist. There's a whole lot of room in the middle. What I did after the election was I'm going to call balls and strikes. If he does something that's good for workers, I'm going to say it. If he does something that's bad for workers, I'm going to say that. And I tell him every day, the less he does to help us, to help working people, to change the rules to help working people, the more he doubles down uh, on, on the rules that favor Wall Street and the very rich, the less support he has. I go back to the fundamental question. What happens when a system is incapable or unwilling of providing a rising standard of living for its citizens? History tells us that system gets changed every single time. And what you're seeing right now are the, the beginnings of people demanding that change. System isn't working for them. It hasn't worked for them for 30 or 40 years. They're now saying change. Change women saying, I'm sick and tired of being sexually harassed in the workplace. People of color, I'm sick and tired of being discriminated against and denied opportunities. White males saying, I'm sick and tired of my wages being cut, my, uh, my health care being cut, my pensions being cut, the time that I have off being cut, going back to the future while we make record profits. Because remember this, for three years in a row, we've had record corporate profits. They've gotten higher each year and broke a record each year. We're the wealthiest nation on the face of the earth at our most rich point in time. We ought to be able to take care of our citizens.